students to uh, access the formula sheet which is there on our application some of them are asking for it folks you can download this from uh, free resources i'll post a link in the chat also yeah it is there in free resources i will be sharing the same right now so that you can get to see it i think this is nothing but a concise booklet which you can access for revising all the formula that are used in every chapter in your mathematics and some of the concepts that are used even in reasoning also okay let me just open the sheet and share with you just give me a i've shared the link in the chat yeah guys you can also see if, if it if the yeah if the resource is accessible by you guys so please check in the interim before i open the application and share it with you live okay see the chat box yeah balchander hope you are able to access ashwin also shared it yeah even saib also shared it okay fine i think that's good but you guys know i think all of you should be able to access it okay thank you are right. should be opening let me try to answer it just give me 30 seconds i'm just opening this file and then sharing with you on live so i can see already we have close to 30 of you for the session okay 34 counting yeah i think it is almost done okay those who have joined guys any anything you wanted to check please do let me know i'm just opening the file and in the interim okay so i think uh Sadhvi is asking, sir, which is more scoring and time saving, either maths or stat? Yeah, I think huh, it it there is no specific answer. It depends on the the part of the syllabus that you are more comfortable with. I would say if you have practiced enough number of problems in statistics, no, I think you can see even in statistics there are a couple of chapters which I'll basically highlight where you'll have a lot of theory based questions. and there will be few chapters where you have direct formula based questions uh uh in in terms of maths i think the number of chapters are more but in terms of practice it is relatively easy so depending on which part of maths you have practiced more and traditionally are more comfortable so that differs from person to person okay so okay so we have question what are the most important chapters to study in stats yeah i think statistics the foundation uh, chapter which is the basics of statistics which is mentioned i think that's the most important one to start with and i think if you see the weightage for each and every chapter which is not not very defined every year but largely it 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 remains in that range you will see the chapters where you have correlation and regression i think you have a lot of questions coming from there so i think uh, when you are writing your mock exams and even some of the papers provided by the institute if you try to break down this Questions into the into the chapters you will see. Online okay, madam. Guys, others who are only online. Okay, guys, uh, please be on mute. Those who are live for the session. Okay, next one in maths. Watch part of maths easy and important. Okay, so one thing is, guys, please don't ask me what is easy. So I think easy differs from person to person. I think for someone, uh, 
uh, statistics may be easy for someone, maths may be easy. So I think we cannot generalize and say this is easy or this is tough. All I can say is any any chapter will be easy provided you have practiced enough of that chapter. So I think it all depends on the kind of comfort you had while in terms of preparation. Okay. Okay. Can I share link other who has not purchased the course? No, just give me a moment. Okay, any other question? Okay, any other question? Uh, you can let me know. Uh, so basically, what are the chapters to show importance to pass? Okay, how to manage the time? You can check here. So managing time, I think, basically there are two basic rules that you have to follow. You have to basically identify the questions which you are comfortable with. Point number one. Obviously, once you look at the paper, you can get fair idea on which are the questions that appeal to you. And more importantly, you should you should know which are the questions that you will not be able to solve for sure. Okay, because wasting time running after questions which will uh, burn your time is a wrong strategy. For example, I have a question, let's say, on integration. And at, uh, by looking at it, if I feel that I have never seen this problem before or if, if this kind of question has not been practiced during my preparation, I think it's best to revisit the question subsequently if you have time. So that's one way to avoid time wastage. And in terms of problems that you are more comfortable, let's say you see a question which is based on ratios or maybe a partnership or maybe a question on subjective questions on statistics, I think you should you should be in a position to solve right away. So since the questions are all mixed in no particular order, so identifying the questions which are not comfortable and then the ones which are easy to start with. So basically will give you that confidence to do the, to attack the paper comfortably. Okay. Okay, Sudarshan is asking, is there negative marks in the exam? You have to tell me. Now that you are prepared for this exam for good number of months, you guys have to tell me if you have negative marks. Anyone? You can also post in the chat box. Do we have negative marks? Definitely, no. If, if there is no negative marks, then there'll be a lot of weightage given to people who will who will answer it randomly. So I think they, they, want, they want to avoid people who basically guess the answers without putting an effort. So basically, there's a penalty of one, one by four. There's a 0.25. Basically, if the question is one mark, so one fourth of one, basically it's a 0.25. Negative mark is there. So if you get a question wrong, Obviously, you will not get that one mark, which you which you can get by getting um, it right, and um, you'll also lose point two. Um, um. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, negative marks pulls down the score. Can we use scientific calculator? No, boss. There's no provision of using scientific calculator i think your basic calculator is all you can use and in terms of the kind of the tricks that you can use and calculator we have also posted a video i suggest please go through that sugam is asking we'll get questions on computation of mean median node which are of five marks i think some of you are very well informed in terms of the kind of questions that come yes mean median mode chapter obviously comes under the basic statistics so i think there you have to be very comfortable. I think uh, formulas will help you solve the problems. Uh, next one is math is very tough. Okay. So I think I'll not comment on it. Reason being, I think it depends on your practice. Okay. Please suggest uh, business math other than TVM. Okay. Yes. I think finally my file is kind of open. Fine. That's a long time. Okay. So let me share my screen now. Uh, Pradeep is asking, sir, I ans can I answer logical reasoning first exam? Yes, absolutely. There's no one stopping you from doing it. Yes. As long as you know how to go proceed with the paper, I think uh, every strategy will work. But you have to allocate time to score well in reasoning also, even your statistics also and your basic math. So guys, I, I think most of you can see the screen. Let me know in case you're finding any difficulty in looking at the screen, guys. Uh, 
Balchand, the sir, in three sources, we can't able to see the past exam analysis for maths and statistics. Why? Okay, so I think, uh, Sai, please look at these questions and probably post the answer. Okay, guys, for the time being, no, till we basically run through some of the revisions of topics, uh, please start posting questions in your chat box. Towards the end, once I run through some of these important formulae that you should recall, maybe we will we'll open the floor for asking questions live. Uh, so you can unmute yourself and ask questions towards the end. Because if we do it in the beginning, I think then we will not be able to put po in position to complete the revision. So I think first we'll focus on that and then we'll, we'll once we finish, I'll give you ample time to uh, take your questions and then answer whichever I can live. And then if we don't have an answer, I'll definitely come back to you. Okay, fine. I think, yes. So I hope everyone is able to see the screen. I repeat. So this is the resource that is shared with you in your free resources. So you can see CA Foundation, Business Mathematics and Logical Reasoning and Statistics is the uh, name. It's paper three in your exam. So you can see the table of contents, the topics that are listed, general algebraic rules, ratio, proportion, continued proportion, loss of indices, logarithm, equations, linear inequality, simple interest, compound interest, and annuity. I think this chapter is very, very important, guys. Permutations and combination, arithmetic progression, geometric progression, set theory, derivatives, differential calculus with applications, integration. So this, this is the first half of your paper. In between, you have logical reasoning where number series, coding, decoding, odd men out, directions, dating arrangements, blood relations is there. And coming to statistics, as some of you asked, measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, correlation, regression, theoretical distribution, index number. So this is what you have in mathematics in a formula sheet. Okay. So don't think because the basics of statistics may there is no formulas, which, which is purely a theory chapter that is still part of your exam. Okay. So don't assume that this is the complete chapter list. So some one chapter which has no formula obviously is not listed here. So in basic algebraic rules, I think most of you are very comfortable in formulas where second degree and third degree polynomials are used like a plus b whole square a minus b whole square what is a plus b whole cube a minus b whole cube so this basic formula is written because in many questions we tend to use these formulas to solve the problem okay like in some of the questions where you have uh, what we call uh, some random numbers given and the it is given in decimals and asked you find out the cube and you have a denominator also, many times they will get cancelled. So obviously, if you check your exercises, such questions are very much visible. And one of you asked, sir, how do we solve a ratio? Simplify a ratio. Yeah, I think one of you asked in the chat box, guys. Ratio by definition means it is the simplest form. So basically, 4 is to 2 cannot be a ratio because it is not in the simplest form. Instead of 4 is to 2, we call it as 2 is to 1. Because once you cancel it in two table, you get 2 is to 1, right? So ratio by definition is always in the simplest form. So, right. So in that case, you have to see if the values can be cancelled with each other, both the denominator and numerator. And if they are cancelable, please do it. Otherwise, if it is the simplest form, let's say 23 is to 16, though they are large numbers, we cannot cancel because 23 and 16 has no common factor except one. In that case, we cannot simplify it. Okay. Now you look at the ratios may. I think generally one question comes from what is a duplicate? So basically, if you have a ratio 2 is to 1, or let's say 3 is to 2, easy for reference. What is a duplicate? Is a square plus b square. So basically, 3 square is to 2 square, 9 is to 4. Sub duplicate of the same value 3 is to 2 will be root 3 is to root 2. Triplicate will be a cube is to b cube. So basically, 3 cube is to 2 cube, 27 is to 8. Sub triplicate. So wherever you have sub, basically, it means square root or cube root. And one of the last formulas is what is the compound ratio of a is to b and c is to b. So compound ratio basically means you have to multiply the first term of the first ratio with the first term of second ratio and second term of the first ratio with second term of second ratio. a is to b and c is to d is a into c is to b into d. So this is one where they have used many times in the exam. So these basic concepts, you should be clear. Generally, they may not ask you a formula, but they will definitely give you a question asking one of these duplicate or sub duplicate or triplicate or sub duplicate or it can be a basic compounding of two ratios also okay now i think you also know what do you mean by proportion when two ratios are equal we call it as proportion basically 
basically what kind of questions can come from proportion as you can see here on my screen in proportion you can have sorry sorry yeah in proportion as you can see you can have questions on first second third and fourth proportional that means you can see if two ratios are equal a is to b is equal to c is to d a is called the first proportion b is called the second proportion c is called the third proportion and d is called the fourth proportional so basically what happens how do you find when two ratios are equal basically a by b is equal to c by d if you cross multiply you will get a into c is equal to b into d which is called product of means is equal to product of extremes so i think most of you are aware so when you know two ratios are equal well when i say x is to 2 is equal to 9 is to 5 what is the value of x then definitely you will write x by 2 is equal to 9 by 5 cross multiply and tell me what is the value of x so basically x will be the first proportion there if the second term is missing second proportional third one is third proportion and fourth one is fourth proportion so here also in proportion be very comfortable in finding out any of the four values provided the two ratios are equal basically they have to be in proportion okay and in addition to that you also have in proportion which is a continuous proportion you have something called as mean proportion mean proportion what does it mean when a by b is equal to b by c or a is to b is equal to b is to c if you cross multiply these two values if you can observe here carefully b into b will give you b square and it will become a into c if b square is equal to ac b will be under root of ac so basically that b is called the mean proportion mean basically means a middle value here so a b a is to b is equal to b is to c will come b will become the mean proportion which is under root of ac and third proportion formula is also there loss of indices i think formulas discussion is not required because this is something that most of you have studied in your ssc or even cbse all the loss of uh, what we call indices so i think uh, please relook at this formulas once directly nobody is going to ask you formula so only application of the formula in logarithms i think the formulas are very handy because you should be very comfortable in simplifying a logarithm and solving it basically this formula will be very handy in many occasions log a power m is equal to m into log a boss basically whatever is the power of a gets multiplied with the logarithm i think most of you are aware of this formula and in terms of the same formula as you can see here is extended here in a different way here there you had only a and m here you have a and n b and m so i think this is a small correction here this is m so you can see just like a power n b power m is there a and b continues to their position so n since it is in the a it becomes a numerator m is with b so it will become the denominator so i think this formula will be very handy and uh, so going down in terms of equations guys i think most of you are aware very very important i think they have captured it very well when does two equations have infinite solutions please look at this very carefully when you have two equations given like ax plus by plus c and another also in the same format like a1x b1y c1 a2x b2y c2 when does the equations have infinite solution means when the ratio of the coefficients of a sorry x y and the constant all in the same ratio just to give you some perspective let us say if i have x plus 2y is equal to 7 and if i have 2x plus 4y is equal to 14 and if i want you to solve this equation and tell me what is the value of x and y you will tell me sir why are you cheating us both the equations are one and the same if you multiply the first equation by 2 you will get the second one or if you divide the second equation by 2 you will get the first one so basically you have fooled us because both equations are one and the same exactly this is what i'm telling if two equations are same the best way to identify if the equations are same is by comparing the ratio of the coefficients of x y and constant you can see the ratios of coefficients of x 1 by 2 the coefficients of y 2 by 4 and the constants are 7 by 14 so you can see all values are equal 1 by 2 is equal to 2 by 4 is equal to 7 by 14 that means when you have two equations which are exactly same obviously one equation two unknowns two equations are useless here because both are same so you have one equation and two unknowns which will give you infinite solution so when he says that a system of equations have infinite solutions and he'll ask you to find out one of the missing value so in this case only let's assume instead of four you have a k 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल x प्लस टू वाई इज इक्वल टू सेवन टू एक्स प्लस के वाई इज इक्वल टू फोर्टीन एंड ये सेज दीज टू इक्वेश इनफाइनाइट सोल्यूशन फॉर वॉट वैल्यू ऑफ के इफ यू आस्किंग देन इंस्टेड ऑफ दिस वन बाई टू इज इक्वल टू टू बाई के इज इक्वल टू सेवन बाई फोर्टीन इज वॉट आई विल राइट बिकॉज यू ऑलरेडी टोल यू दे इनफाइनाइट सोल्यूशन टेक एनी वन पेयर एंड फाइंड आउट द वैल्यू ऑफ के इफ यू सी के विल बी फोर पेयर ऑल्सो तो वेन डज इक्वेश इनफाइनाइट सोल्यूशन एंड द रेशियोज आर एक्जैक्टली इक्वल Similarly, other two scenarios are given. So please, before going to the exam, I think all of you should look at this little bit carefully. Okay. Now, if you look at this, is the linear equations. If you look at quadratic equations, no, the most important one is to solve a quadratic equation, finding out the roots. I think here, you know, any quadratic equation will look like x square minus sum of the products into x plus product of the roots is equal to zero. This is a fundamental rule of any quadratic equation. And if alpha and beta are the roots, what is sum of the roots? Minus b by a. What is product of the roots? C by a. And what is the nature of the roots? Is something that you will find out using the determinant. I think it is clearly mentioned here. Determinant greater than zero, equal to zero, and less than zero. What are the scenarios? And you should be very careful with these two scenarios because if it is less than zero, no, I am not worried because they are non-real and unequal. But when they are greater than zero or equal to zero, in both cases the roots are real. Just that when determinant is equal to zero, the roots are equal also. Like x square minus four x plus four will be x minus two whole square. The same root is repeating twice. Okay, so that's where you have to remember. Now, in terms of linear inequalities, obviously formula is of not much use, but understanding how this is represented in a graph is very very critical. That means you can see the values can lie above the graph. Like here, it is drawn very beautifully, and the values can lie. Beneath the graph also. Let's assume this equation is x is equal to k. So obviously x greater than k is all the values which are lying to the above of this line, and the values which are below the line are x less than. K. So if you have seen here, it is written less than or equal to, and this is greater than or equal to. So this is something that you should all watch out for. And obviously in the exam, you cannot expect the question to be very plain vanilla question like. Only greater than or less than. So obviously they'll ask you a bounded region. For example, they will give you a coordinate axis. They'll give you two three lines and they'll put a mesh in that between the uh, lines and ask you which what is the system of equations which will represent this. Okay. Okay, Raj Kumar, I think you have to go on mute. So please mute yourself. Okay. Now moving on to the most important chapter in your first part of maths, which is. Simple interest, compound interest, and annuity. I think annuity is where I think uh, even even as a faculty, despite teaching is this chapter for so long, there is always uh, that fear that I can go wrong in terms of the formula. So I think don't expect, don't push yourself too much and think that you should remember everything. It's always good even if you if you try to revise the formula till the last moment. Because by nature the formulas are very tricky, especially in annuity. So, but definitely, okay, Raj Kumar and Sudha, I think you guys have to go on mute, please. Anyone who's live, please go on mute. Okay, now you look at the formulas in simple interest, compound interest. Simple interest, I think, very straightforward. Compound interest is where you should know how the formula will change when you have the compounding done yearly. You can see a change here where n is one. Where the moment it becomes compounding half yearly, so it gets multiplied by two, and it gets divided by two. So you can see hundred becomes two hundred. When it is compounded quarterly, in a year you have four months, four quarters. So basically this becomes four n, and the denominator which is hundred is now multiplied by four, which becomes four hundred. So obviously every division is also adjusted by a multiplication. So multiplication is in the power. And division is in the denominator. That is how we proceed with the adjustment. This formula, okay. And and coming to couple of questions with respect to before going into the annuity, you have question for compounded annual growth rate, which is called CAGR. I think you have to remember this formula, which is very very useful formula. So, for example, if I tell you 2016, let us say 2016, the production of rice in India is let's say uh, 120 metric tons. In 2021, the production of rice in India is 200 metric tons. What is the compounded annual growth rate? Here, what you will do is 200, which is the base value for this 
whatever is the reference value divided by 120, which was the old value, power 1 by n. 1 by n will tell you for how many years you are assessing this. So basically from 2016 to 2020, you have 5 years. So 200 by 120, whole power 1 by 5 minus 1. So whatever value that comes out to be in percentage, that gives, that will give you the compounded annual growth rate. Okay, this, this is useful. And generally, you have to use a calculator because if it's a perfect cube or a perfect square, it will be okay. But power 1 by 5, so obviously you have to use the calculator. Okay. And how do you determine the scrap value? Scrap value is basically like your compound interest formula. Instead of amount is equal to principal into 1 plus R by 100 whole power N, basically in terms of plus, it will become minus. Basically, scrap value means what? For every asset, you have a depreciation. The value will keep reducing over a period of time. So basically, since it's on the declining trend, instead of plus, we put minus, right? So P into 1 minus R by 100 whole power N. P is the original value of the product and N is the number of years for which you are depreciating and R is the rate of depreciation. Okay. Now, the most important chat in this first part of the book is remembering the formulas for annuity. So, as you all know, annuity means there are two concepts. One is called future value and present value. What is future value? Basically, let's say you are investing money today and you want to know how much money you will get at the end of your retirement. You will compute future value. Let's say I am currently 20 years. And at the end of 60th year, when I'm retiring from my job, let's say yearly I'm paying 5,000, 10,000 or 20,000, how much money will I get after 40 years? Basically, since you're 20, at the end of 60th year, how much money will I get? If you want to know how much money you're going to get in future, basically use the formulas for future value. Obviously, future may money will be more. If you're going from today to future, obviously the value of money will increase. Where does present, present value will be useful? is when you want to know how much money you want to settle today. Let's say the value is worth 10,000 after one year, but you want to settle the amount today. Basically, one after one year, it is 10,000. Today, it will be less than 10,000. How much less? That depends on the rate of interest. So basically, if you are taking the money forward, it will increase. If you, take, if you are bringing the money back, the value will reduce. So how much increase, how much decrease? That depends on the number of years and the rate of interest. So basically, you have future value and present value. Annuity concept is basically, I think most of you know, I'm not getting into details, is when you are paying the same amount of money every year without any interruption. So basic rules, amount has to be same and there should be no interruption. So formula for regular annuity, okay, then you have annuity due. I think all of you know what is regular annuity and annuity due, okay. It is mentioned here. If the installment given for the beginning of the each period, basically if you start saving the money at the end, End of every year, it is regular annuity. But if you start saving the money from today itself at the beginning of the year, it is called annuity due. Immediate. It is also called annuity immediate, if you recall. Okay. So these two formulas will help you in that regard. Okay. Now, if I just go further down. Okay. So in this, guys, I think most of you are aware uh, for annuity due, what is the final adjustment that we do? I think most of you should be very clear that for annuity due, in terms of the answer, once we get the final answer, you have to multiply with 1 plus i if the installment is annual. I think majority of you are aware of this, right? But still, I am suggesting that this formula that you are going to use, right? This formula will give you only for annuity regular. If you want to know what is annuity due, assume the question to be annuity regular only, find out the answer. Finally, after you get the answer, multiply it with 1 plus i because there is no separate formula for future value of annuity due. Okay, annuity regular kind formula hai. We have to do some adjustment. Okay, permutation combination. I think all of you should be comfortable with what is the difference between permutation combination in terms of computation, right? I think NPR and NCR. NPR, N factorial by N minus R factorial. NCR, N factorial by N minus R factorial into R factorial. So I think number of permutations will be more than combinations for any given sample, right? So I think these formulas that are mentioned here, very, very important, especially this formula that is, I'm just highlighting for you guys. Number of arrangements of N things with P, Q, R alike objects. For example, uh, if I'm trying to find out the number of words possible, let us say with my name Pavan, different words with the name of Pavan, P A B A N. As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So 5 factorial 
in this you can see a is repeating two times so we adjust it with two factorial i think most of you are aware that we'll take obviously the total count and we'll divide it with any value that is repeating two times or three times how many number of times it repeat we do that adjustment so in that regard i think this formula will be very useful and what happens when you have arrangements in a line n factorial what happens when you have an arrangement around a circle n minus 1 factorial what happens when basically you have to find out the number of arrangements when you are doing a necklace kind of arrangement basically n minus 1 factorial by 2 okay then what is the combination what what is this formula where it is used i think couple of problems if you have practiced you will realize where they'll find out the value they'll give you a equation they'll give you a scenario and ask you to find out the value of n where basically you have to do, expand it and cancel it and find out the value of n okay and there are a lot of problems where you have to find out how many selections are possible or how many arrangements are possible when you are arranging people in a straight line when you are trying to arrange them in a circle so such scenarios will be given i think you guys would have practiced decent number of problems. Uh, we'll not get into problems for the simple reason that uh, since this is only a refresh and basically a forum for asking questions. Moving on to the next one, arithmetic and geometric progression. I think here, most of the questions that you'll be solving are straight formula questions. One chapter where you read a question, you know where to apply the formula, okay? Arithmetic progression, term to n terms, nth term, geometric progression, how do you need to take the terms and what is the nth term a into r power n minus 1 and what is the sum of n terms and the most important one here is only in geometric progression you have the concept of s infinity so how do you find out the value of s infinity i think that formula is also shared and in geometric progression the and the formula for sum to n terms will change depending on whether r is greater than 1 or is less than 1 so when the progression is increasing r power n minus 1 by r minus 1 r comes first when the progress is decreasing like uh, 16 8 4 2 1 1 by 2 1 by 4 so on if the progress is decreasing then obviously instead of r power n minus 1 you'll have the reverse which is 1 minus r power n by 1 minus r that's how the problem goes right so basically see ultimately whichever formula you use you may get the same answer but we should be very clear what happens in increasing and decreasing so which formula to use where okay and then what is the arithmetic mean of two numbers a plus b by two and what is the geometric mean of two numbers root a b and then what how, if if a certain series is given how to find out the nth term and sum to n terms is very very critical guys i think this is where the practice that you would have done would have come in very handy so i suggest if you have not done the practice please look at some of the questions uh, I suggest the best way to do practice at the last moment is probably pick up some mock paper or some of the mock exams that are available already in our uh, resource section or in our app and probably see if you can solve that problem. If you cannot solve, please refer this uh, formula sheet and see which, which formula you can use or in case you have any queries, obviously our forum is always there for helping you guys. Okay, And, and in progressions, you also have Three formulas where to find out sum of n natural numbers n into n plus 1 by 2. How do you find out the squares of sum of the first n natural numbers n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 by 6 and how to find out the sum of the cubes of the first natural numbers which is n into n plus 1 by 2 whole square. Okay <coughs> and this is the formula that I was highlighting. If you have an infinite geometric progression which is decreasing obviously the progression if it is increasing you cannot find sum to infinity terms because sum of n terms, sum of the infinite terms will be infinite only because the progression is increasing. So you know, you will never know where it stops. But when a progression is decreasing, which is particularly a geometric progression only I'm referring to, let's say I gave an example of 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 4, and so on. If it is decreasing, like 1 by infinity at the end, it will become 0. You know, it's going to stop somewhere, right? So in that case, what is the formula for S infinity? A by 1 minus R. So I think. Is a very important formula for come to infinite terms of a geometric progression. Now moving on to the next chapter, you have set theory. I think set theory is one where you you should be very clear with the notation of what do you mean by a what do you mean by a set which does not have an element. What is singleton set? What is a power set? Right, these formulas. 
and de morgan's law that is mentioned here which is a union b whole component so this is a very very useful box that is highlighted here for you guys i think this will come in very handy even when you are solving probability questions and and when you solve the problems okay so you should be very comfortable with what kind of relation that exists with them whether it is reflexive whether it is symmetric or transitive basically what kind of questions you can expect either he'll give you a basic, uh, is the brother of if i ask you is the brother of is it a reflexive relation symmetric tra relation transitive relation or if a, all the properties are satisfied it will become an equivalence relation is the brother of if i say obviously if you take let's say my name pavan pavan cannot be a brother of himself pavan cannot be a brother of himself obviously then it cannot be a reflexive relation right let us say a is the brother of b does it mean b is also brother of a definitely yes because this elder anger we are not specifying we are only speaking about brothers so if a is the brother of b definitely b is the brother of a then if it will it will become a symmetric relation similarly if a is the brother of b b is the brother of c definitely a will become the brother of c so then it will become a transitive relation also so if such statements are given you have to find out what kind of uh, relations they satisfy it's very easy just check or otherwise also what they'll give you is they'll give you ordered pairs and they'll ask you whether they are satisfying reflexive relation symmetric relation or transitive relation or if they satisfy all three as mentioned here it's an equivalence relation so you can expect two kind of questions one a statement and they'll ask you what kind of relation they have or they'll give you an ordered pair let's say four five ordered pairs are given in flower brackets so what you will check let's say if you if you want to check whether the relation is symmet symmetric for example if you have an ordered pair 1 comma 2 that means 2 comma 1 should also be there for example if 3 comma 2 is there 2 comma 3 also should be there that is how you check transitive or uh, symmetric relation similarly if 1 comma 2 is there 2 comma 3 is there that means 1 comma 3 also should be there because the 2 2 a is the brother of b b is the brother of c means a is also brother of c like 1 comma 2 ordered pair is there 2 comma 3 is there 1 comma 3 also should be there. like that you have to check whether the set has reflexive properties like 1 comma 1 symmetric 1 comma 2 is there 2 comma 1 also is there and e transitive 1 comma 2 is there 2 comma 3 is there 1 comma 3 also should be there if all three are satisfied you know it is an equivalence relation like that also questions are there which is very good after relations is over now you have functions in functions you have very very fundamental questions that are given so don't think there are lot of difficulty questions you should know how to compute fog of f gof of x and fog of x which is very very easy and when an ordered pair is given you should know what is domain and what is range so domain are basically the values which are given as inputs and the range are the values which are an output so in an ordered pair 1 comma 2 means 1 is the input 2 is the output for example 0 comma 5 is there 0 is the input 5 is the output as simple as that okay then if i just go further down in terms of derivatives i think here more than the formulas you should be very comfortable with the models that are possible because formulas are not going to help you here you have to be very comfortable by looking at the question you should be in a position to immediately tell okay i am going to use this kind of method for example well you have x power 3 into log x you have to find out the differentiation of x power 3 into log x x cube into log x immediately you should know it's a differentiation of uv u v dash plus v u dash so this is what i am going to do you should have the clarity of thought and basically proceed so you can see the basic differentiation of various functions like e power x a power x log x all these values are given and this this one that i am going to highlight no this is very very important guys so i suggest every year when you look at the paper no there is a question on how to find out marginal cost or how to find out break even point at what level of production does this company achieve break even so a lot of questions which are given in terms of equations so i suggest all of you guys please have a good look at this part of the formula sheet what exactly does it mean how to find out average cost how to find out variable cost and from total cost how do you find out marginal cost as it is already written here marginal cost is from the total cost once you do differentiation you will get the marginal cost and basically how to find out where do you get a break even point so i think if you pick couple of questions and solve them no they'll come in very very handy and they are very very important question okay
then moving on to the next one which is basically uh, like the complement like mirror image of differentiation is integration i think here remembering formulas makes very good sense like how to what is the differentiation of e per x what is the integration of e per x so such questions in the sense basic formula and if you have more than two functions how do you do integration right and more importantly what is differentiation by parts like this is slightly tricky formula so i would all of you want to remember this and also remember what is lae rule logarithmic function algebraic function and then exponential function for example some of you might be asking sir what is lae if i have to differentiate uv let's say you let's say i have given a if i want you to differentiate x power 3 into log x let's say i want you to differentiate x power 3 into sorry integrate x power 3 into log x dx then you should know what is u and u v you should not take in the order i have given because the la rule tells you that the first first if you have a combination of two functions u will always be first one which is logarithmic function followed by algebraic function then exponential function so deliberately i have written x power 3 to log x where i have written an algebraic function first followed by logarithmic function so but if you start with x cube as u and log x as v then we have made it blunder you have to do the reverse log x will become u x cube will become v because la rule is very very critical it tells you the order in which you should do it okay i think definite integration all of you know where you have limits and basically once you find out the final integration then you have to substitute the values in a definite integration definitely you don't have a constant in an indefinite integration you have plus c or plus k one of the two values okay mm -hmm. logical reasoning i think fairly comfortable fairly comfortable where you can solve lot of questions on logical reasoning in terms of directions i think most of you are comfortable in drawing the values and then moving ahead and then finding out the hypotenuse value or sum of the values or addition of the values so in reasoning i think is fairly comfortable guys i think this is lot this is more of a guidance sheet that is given four to five papers i think please go through this guidance sheet just for reference and coming to statistics where it is very very critical that you read so if you have to revise one thing please first revise statistics then only go to maths i think statistics is the one which is going to help you a lot it is this sheet so statistics means you can see how statistical data is basically collected the first chapter that i told no all the theory that is there in the first chapter is very well captured here what is the direct method what is an in, in, indirect method what is a telephone method where are these methods more useful for example in in case you have accidents where you cannot directly go and collect data from the users like the railway accidents basically we used to indirect sort of methods and in which cases the responses are minimal like when you are sending mails obviously people will not respond something like that okay and types of classification of data and what are the different types of representation of data textual tabular diagrammatic in that also obviously which is the best one for which context is basically mentioned so in bar diagram also different types of bar diagrams are mentioned horizontal and vertical and pie diagram i think most of you know how to basically convert the values into a pie whether degrees into percentage or percentage into degrees and this formula is very very important guys so please just remember number of class intervals into length of the class will give you the range that is highest value minus lowest value this is very very critical and how do you find out the mid value or class mark when you have upper and lower values given and how do you find out the width of the width or size of length of the class which is ucb minus lcb and what is frequency of density and relative frequency relative frequency by nature will always lie between 0 to 1 the least value is 0 and highest value is 1 and in terms of frequency curve bell shaped mostly used they, generally they can ask you uh, which is the most frequently used probability distribution then it obviously you can say it's a bell shape then you can have ogives histograms and frequency polygon these are all theory okay so i think once you open your icai foundation material the it, at the end of every chapter you have exercises right so in some cases you have two exercises in case you have three exercises basically what you have to do i am repeating for the benefit of all students before you go to the exam 
in statistics particularly i would want all of you guys to open your ica material look at each every chapter every chapter the first exercise is dedicated to the theory questions in some cases few theory questions are there in some cases the entire first part of the paper that means first part of the text is full theory so i think before you go to the exam please look at all the questions mark your answers and check the key you have to get 100% right even if you know it please do it again because in statistics the theory questions keep repeating they cannot create more and more theory questions so in any theory question that you are familiar with you should not get it wrong because that's where you are going to lose marks okay and going down guys if you recall uh, central tendency is very very critical as one of you mentioned uh, you have five questions abey i'll come back to you i think once we are please keep your doubts pulled okay so anyone who is in avid doubts please write down the question somewhere in your sheet once i run through this formula sheet no any question that you ask i'll probably open that page again and answer it live uh, because once we once we start discussing now i think it will become big uh, will there lot of chaos so i want to first finish this so you can see as one of you mentioned in the chat box there are five questions that are coming from this chapter measures of central tendency mean median and mode tendency of mean how do you find out find out the mean of a sample median of a sample and mode of a sample and what about arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean under which vertex they are equal and this this these two formulas are very very important for any two values how do you find out arithmetic mean how do you find out geometric mean and how do you find out harmonic mean also right if they give any two values how do you find out the answers okay right and many questions may you should be very clear about this that means due to change of origin and due to change of scale am median and mode all will change so change of origin what is change of origin addition and subtraction change of scale multiplication and division so am arithmetic mean median and mode measures of central tendency the first three values they are affected by change of origin they are affected by change of scale also okay now basically they'll give you this kind of equation and then ask you if value of x median of x is equal to some 10 or 15 they'll ask you what is the median of 5 for this equation then you know that it will be affected by change of origin and scale change of scale substitute the value and tell them the answer as simple as that okay and mark it and in terms of going further down you you know this formula is very important if you have any two samples that are given to you how do you find out the combined arithmetic mean number of number of values in the first sample into its arithmetic mean plus number of values in the second sample into its own arithmetic mean divided by the total number of samples okay and in terms of which is the good one in which context i think here theory questions will be very very helpful in this case and i think what is the relation between mean median mode also please remember there will be few if if possible you have a question on mean while mean and median are given they'll ask you mode or vice versa then you know how to find out the decimals percentiles right and so on by very nature the, the formulas are self explanatory so i think all of you please focus on that formula once and the third chapter in your statistics i think this is where a lot of students do not like but this is very very critical i'll come to that in in the second chapter only of dispersion i think we have discussed about central of central tendency now we are discussion we are discussing about dispersion absolute and relative i think in your ica foundation material also there is a small table where they'll tell you for every absolute measure of dispersion you have a relative measure of dispersion like range coefficient of range right arithmetic uh, the range coefficient of range then you have other ones also if i just go down quartile deviation coefficient of quartile deviation mean deviation coefficient of mean deviation then you have standard deviation coefficient of variation so i think these are for every measure of dispersion right which is a absolute measure you also have a relative measure whose formula is very well defined i think that is what you have to recall okay and if you see this is very very critical for change of origin quartile deviation mean deviation standard deviation do not change but due to change of scale they can change accordingly very very simple guys if you take 1 2 3 as the sample and if i ask you what is the range you will subtract 3 minus 1 and say sir the answer is 2 if i increase each value by 1 instead of 1 2 3 now i take 2 3 4 and if i ask you what is the range now you will say sir the range is 4 minus 2 which is 
whether the sample is 1, 2, 3 or 2, 3, 4, the range is same because you have just increased every value by 1. So the due to change of origin, your quartile deviation, standard deviation, mean deviation would not change. Whereas due to change of scale, definitely it will change. Instead of 1, 2, 3, let's say you multiply each value by 2. Instead of 1, 2, 3, now you have 2, 4, 6. Then if you find out what is the range, 1, 2, 3, KLU, the range is 2. Whereas for 2, 4, 6, the range will become 4. So here it will be affected by change of scale. Okay. Then if I just go further down, correlation and regression. I think in correlation, you have three formulas. Basically, what you have to remember, I think uh, coefficient of correlation with three formulas, Carl Pearson's product moment correlation, Spearman's rank correlation, co concurrent deviations, coefficient of concurrent deviations. For everyone, you have a formula. All you need to do is read the question, understand what values are given, substitute in the formula, and I think you should be fairly reasonable in terms of how you look at that paper. Okay. So I think better way to remember these formulas is for every formula that you feel I'm not able to recall, I suggest please open your material, foundation material or our app where these resources are already there. Open that chapter, look at that video which is already pre-recorded and shared with you in your app and look at that any question that is discussed in the class and then look at the formula again. If you feel that now the formula is making sense, it will be great. Otherwise, you try one, one problem on your own. Okay. Right. If I just go further down. Regression. I think you should know how to find out which is the regression e equation of y on x or x on y. And basically, what are the properties of regression lines? When they are parallel, when they are perpendicular, when you have the coefficient of regression equation of y on x and x and y. That means basically you have byx and bxy. How do you find out the value of R and how do you know whether the R is positive or negative also the special case. So these are things that are expected that you recall. This has come many number of times in the exam. So please remember if the value of R is equal to plus or minus one coefficient of correlation. The two lines coincide. That means they are identical. If R is equal to zero, that means the two lines are perpendicular with right angles to each other. So these are the kind of things that you should recall guys. And the formulas that we were discussing, you know, what is the coefficient of determination, R square, what is the coefficient of non-determination? For example, they'll give you the value of R is equal to 0.6. What is the coefficient of determination? If the value of R is equal to 0.6, R square will be 0.36. So the coefficient of determination will be 0.36, which is 36%. Coefficient of non-determination will be 100 minus 36, which is 64%. So basically, if R is given, R square will give you a coefficient of determination. 1 minus R square will be a coefficient of non-determination. Okay. And moving on to the probability. Probability also, you should be comfortable with formulas and concepts like what is do you mean by mutually exclusive? When do you make P of A intersection be as 0 in our formulas? And very important concept is odds in favor and odds against. What is odds in favor? What against? This is very, very critical. So please try to revise as much as possible and two, two, three scenarios where you are picking cards from a 52 number of cards or basically when you are throwing dice, right? So those kind of scenarios, I think you are fairly comfortable. And the most important may this formula P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. If A and B are mutually exclusive, that means one is not related to other Then P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B. That means this will become zero. I think you have remembered the scenarios and these two formulas may definitely there's a one question that is coming. So please watch out for questions. P of A by B and P of B by A. And after you look at the basic questions, then you are looking at random variable. Every year, definitely one question will find out. You will get from how to find out either the expected value E of X or E of X square. So either you'll get E of X or E of X square. So I suggest, please guys, look at one formula, either this one or this one. One of these two will come for sure as a problem, guys. Okay. So I think you have to be fairly comfortable. And moving on to the next chapter, which is theoretical distribution. I think this is one chapter where students who probably are not comfortable, max, they will not like this chapter. But I think I would say this is one of the good chapters in your statistics because 
here also you know which formula can be used in which scenario like binomial distribution when you have small number of values where p and q values are given or if p is given you already find out the value of q as 1 minus p you have the value of n is given the number of trials and basically you know where to use binomial distribution and generally they have a problems generally you have one question on poison distribution every year right and then you have normal distribution which we'll come back to later so binomial distribution i think you know most of them this formula is used and how to find out the mean of any binomial distribution how to find out the variance npq this has come many number of times in the exam how to find out the standard deviation of a binomial distribution so basically all these are very very they might look very simple guys the formulas might look very simple but you have to recall these formulas when you are writing the exam the moment you read the question where they ask you let's say i am doing let's let's say someone is carrying out an experiment 10 times and his probability of success is 0.3 what is the standard deviation then you should not try to uh, scratch your head basically what you have to do you have to remember the formula standard deviation is under root of npq n is equal to 10 P is equal to point three, so Q is equal to one minus point three point seven. So basically, number of trials ten into point three to point seven under root that will be a standard deviation. So every time a question comes, no, use the formula bit automatically try to figure out, filter, and basically give you an answer. So that's where I said when someone asks you, sir, how do we save time in the exam or not waste time in the exam? You look at a question, and if you are able to recall the formula straight away, I think you should go for it. but if you are still struggling to recall it after 30 seconds 40 seconds no i suggest please mark the question for review and probably revisit subsequently because anyway i am not going to guess the answer unless i do at least some work and if i want to guess then still it is okay but randomly i cannot guess an answer right now coming to poisson distribution in poisson distribution i think this formula is the most used formula in the papers that i have seen guys every year i think they are very very clear that they want to give a question on poisson distribution i think m you know is called the mean and also variance mean and variance both are equal and x as you can see is the number of times that you are conducting the trial and e is basically an exponential value okay so here also what is the mean of a poisson distribution what is the standard deviation and so on and so forth so here also you have questions okay this this formula is very very rarely used so if you if you are having trouble in remembering things formula no i suggest that's okay so don't push yourself too hard and basically for every distribution whether it is binomial distribution or poisson distribution or normal distribution there are lot of theory questions that come from this properties that are listed here that means in which distribution are the mean median and mode equal you should not go and write right in a unimodal basically that is what you have to find out then what are the properties they hold and what is the standard normal distribution i think standard normal distribution form problems are slightly tricky i think some of you might be struggling to solve problems but those guys who are comfortable with standard normal distribution problems no i think you are in good position because even if very tough question comes you should be position to handle i think then moving on to the last chapter which is your index numbers here they generally avoid giving subjective questions theory questions most of the time they'll ask you to find out the value of a certain variable in a certain series like they'll either ask you uh, index numbers may index number for this year is this and for this year it is this so what is the relative index number something like that you can see here like what i just asked you uh, i'll just put out yeah these are the formulas in fact we have seen in one of the previous papers no these guys have gone to the extent of asking this formula fisher's price index or fisher's quantity index so we thought this is a formula is a very large one it will be very difficult for students to solve it but since even then they have given in one exam so my suggestion would be guys if this question is there in your paper no even if you know the formula i would suggest please revisit this question towards the end only because even if you end up solving this problem and if you take 3 to 4 minutes it's waste of time in that case so basically time is also of critical essence for us in the exam so while practicing or while solving the problems in the actual paper no please focus on the questions which will take less time so that way you will be you will not be under any pressure by looking at the balance time or the balance number of question and in index numbers 
generally there is a theory question sometimes where they'll give you an index number and they'll tell you what kind of test it will satisfy whether it will satisfy last per index last per test or pass test or unit reversal test you can see here unit test factor reversal test time reversal test and circular test so they'll give you an index number and ask you what kind of test does it satisfy if it satisfies unit test you say unit test or factor reversal test time reversal test and circular test okay and this note that is mentioned now this is very very useful right i think this is what you have to read to ensure that your theory question marks do not miss and your entire paper let's say you have at least 10% of your paper as pure theory question <coughs> let's say i have 100 questions <coughs> out of 100 10 questions will be pure theory and if you are missing out on answering the pure theory questions so then yourself you have to blame yourself because you have not done proper revision of theory question so how do you do revision basically you open every chapter look at ICA material see what is exercise the first exercise given most of the theory questions will be there in the first exercise if you recall the answer very beautiful if you don't recall i only tell you what to do don't recall means go back to the video that is uploaded look at them if you have time otherwise immediately look at the key that is there in your material obviously then mark the answer and please remember it till your exam okay so that is what ideally we wanted to look at so basically we thought it will take 45 minutes to one hour for us to basically run through these formulas and not discuss these formulas in detail because then it will become like a pure discussion of the formulas we would want to have enough time in the forum for students to ask questions either live so let me go to the chat section and see what are the questions that have come guys then basically i'll also ask you guys to come to your questions okay shivani is asking sir kindly share this pdf uh saib if you can please share this in the group no i think it will be very helpful for the students so manoj kumar is asking stats is plural or singular or both both it is plural it is one of those words in english no which you can use in singular context or plural context also okay and then Sir, please explain relation in detail. It's very confusing. Okay, fine. I will I will use an example. Okay, push pushy. I'll use it now. So don't worry. Then will this class be uploaded in YouTube? Yes, it should be there. Uh, sir, how to calculate one by five CAGR? Yeah, I think that is where your calculator has to come into place. I have just given a random example. Even if you have a question of CAGR, generally they'll either stick to square root or cube root. And even those values which you will get inside will be very straightforward where you can find out square root and cube root. So don't be worried about that. Uh, so can you talk some in Hindi? Achha, Hindi. I think for the benefit of the students, Hindi may be baat karenge. So questions jo bhi hai aapko, so chat box pe aap dal dijiye. Or if I'm not able to answer it, definitely we'll come back. We'll look at the question or We'll, we'll try to respond to you in your WhatsApp group, okay? And he will share the PDF in your group. Otherwise, I'm just for the benefit of all the students, please open your app, go to the, uh, what we call, section where you have downloads or what we call free resources. And from there, I think you can access it. Uh, so, Okay, Ashwin is saying, firstly, thanks a lot for this meet. Please explain mantis and logarithms. Also, guide if it's important to remember those lengthy form line stats, especially those concerning frequency distribution. No, no, no. I think I thank you for highlighting Ashwin. The large formulas which are there for frequency distribution, don't lose your sleep over them. Conveniently ignore those questions here. Don't get into those. Last moment, the, the last thing that we want you guys to remember, focus on questions which are definitely going to come like you should never forget what is the coefficient of range formula you should never forget how to compute last first index what is that formula you should never forget how to compute fisher's ideal number but for those big formulas which are there for frequency distribution i think those are not required i am not saying they will not come but the probability is very less so if you have to prioritize, I would rather prioritize and formulas which are easy than the ones which are tough. Okay. Then there's a discussion over we're going to practice few sums or anything. Okay. For those students which have asked me to specifically look at a question, no, I will come back. For example, one of you asked, uh, what is that question? 
relation in detail probably i'll pick up an example on the screen right now and explain what's the relation and uh, next let me just go up okay so for the student who has asked for a relation no let me just pick my pen okay so for example i'll i'm writing a uh, ordered pair so okay please look at it carefully guys 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 these are given okay this is an ordered pair okay four numbers are given 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 now if i ask you what kind of relation is this ordered pair satisfied the first thing that i look at is reflexive what is reflexive if one is there basically one comma one is there yes one comma one is there two comma two is there basically it will satisfy reflexive property now i want to know what is symmetric property what is symmetric property one comma two is there means basically two comma one also should be there for one comma one even if you change x to y y to x it will be same so it will satisfy your symmetric property also now coming to transitive property what is transitive property as i told you one comma two is there 2 comma 1 is also there so 1 comma 1 is it there yes you can see that is a transitive property also so reflexive symmetric and transitive if it is satisfying all three then you know it will satisfy an equivalence relation so that's how we we'll look at wherever we have to solve a problem uh, sugam is asking sir discuss about practical problems of future value and present value for sinking fund and leasing decisions boss i think we are getting into too much details basically for leasing that problems i think i suggest please look at your material ones i think uh, these problems basically the expectation is that by this time those leasing based questions or a sinking fund based questions you have to remember the formula for future value and present value i think uh, very specific questions are there the best way to solve and remember the questions is to look at your mock exam questions and try solving them okay we have discussed in fact for those students who probably did not access the resources if you recall guys we have already uploaded couple of papers discussed live and recorded and saved for you guys for your reference at least two three papers are there if, if i am wrong please correct me so i suggest uh, we have recorded those questions and we have recorded as as if we are solving in an exam and shared it on your application so i suggest please look at that papers guys i think it will be very helpful and for those students who are asking me to solve present value future value problems if you look at those papers no already along with the question what formula is used whether future value is used or present value is used and why it is used what is the adjustment that we have done if there was an adjustment everything is basically shared in fact one of the students has also shared so from our moderators also shared formula sheet notes and calculated tricks part 1 and calculated tricks part 2 so i think some of you are asking calculated tricks for the wider benefit of the audience we also recorded few basic tricks that you can use from your calculator two videos are there please look at them and more important is formula sheet how you can access is also shared here okay so shared in the paper and for those who did not look at the solved paper yet please do it we have already uploaded couple of videos videos which where we have recorded all the questions that has come in the last possible exam that is conducted for you based on memory and then we have solved the problems live so i think if you look at that then definitely you will know where i will be discussing which is a tough question which is an easy question where we can use elimination approach where we can use options approach and why that formula is applicable in that problem is also discussed when i am discussing that paper there so i suggest please look at it i think these are certain things that you have to do in the last moment along with revision of this uh, formula sheet so will become more comfortable so don't lose your sleep over any chapter where you feel that you are not comfortable it's okay if there is one chapter or worst scenario two chapters where you are not comfortable comfortable since you are not completely ignoring that chapter at least the theory questions that may come from the chapter you should be comfortable what you can do is probably open icm material for example i am not comfortable with chapter x at least i open the chapter x and look at the theory questions that are there in your exercise 1 exercise 2 exercise 3 exercise 1 let's say theory questions i'll remember all the answers so in case 
by luck if if i have a theory question given from the chapter i know the answer remember it i'll just mark it okay uh, saib so saying these videos are available as part of the course we have solved july 21 and december 21 paper guys i think we have clarification from saib deep also he is saying that july 21 and december 21 paper that means the latest two available papers with us which are conducted for you by the institute have been sourced they have been solved and they were solved live and recorded and shared with you so i think that will give you some confidence and how i proceed so one thing i wanted to tell you basically when i'm solve when when you look at the videos no you will see that answers for all the questions are basically solved in the stipulated time okay don't assume that you have, you also have to solve each and every question okay there is no that pressure because obviously we come prepared i would have solved the paper fully in the stipulated time obviously there will be few questions couple of questions where you will you may not be able to answer while actually attempting the paper that's perfectly fine and one one point i wanted to share with all the students is when you are looking at questions and unfortunately you you are not able to solve let's say a series of four to five questions continuously because of whatever reason may be there wrongly placed or where they are difficult or you are not comfortable with those concepts never panic in the exam please do it patiently i think you have large paper so one two questions here and there or three four questions here and there continuously if you are able to solve please don't get into panic always start with the concept that you know and the question that you can solve if you start right i think half the job is done that will give you a lot of confidence to approach the paper abhay is asking sir my first class how much class i have missed i don't know if you have when did you join if you have joined just now i think you are joining at the end because that formulas have been revised and some of the questions of the students have also been taken and any questions more you have guys please post it in the uh, chat section or any resources which you need in which you are not able to access please request here i think we can probably share it live like sai deep is also live with us so he can probably help you with uh, the resource how to access the resources and any clarifications that is required in the forum so i think we are on the job 24 by 7 let me see the chat box if i have missed something i think kushi i have explained the relation hope it is clarified for you uh, ashwin as i told you this up this will be uploaded tagr question also i told you hindi part is taken care of you can attempt the questions which are prepared generally you don't have sections you will mix of questions yes sir i you are right absolutely uh, next uh, sugam as i told you practical problems on future value and present value uh, because since this is not a session where i want to solve the problems probably i want to address the formulas and their application i think we'll stick to that and in case you still feel that there are questions on particular topic where i am not at all comfortable but still i want to learn before the exam probably we'll discuss it offline yes, definitely i will help you guys but for the wider audience let's not get into the solving problem now i think it will defeat the purpose okay yeah any other questions you guys have please post it here with respect to your exam i think uh, with with respect to reasoning i think there is no formulas that i'm going to tell you about reasoning because reasoning by very nature is a problem that comes there and you can probably solve then and then like direction the relation uh, and there is no compulsion that if i have a question you have to ask now it's in case you have a question and if you feel that i don't want to ask here i want to just type it in the forum please do it okay and uh, saib has also shared your link google forms uh, where probably we are going to take the feedback for the class that we have just conducted so please share your feedback for the class that we have just conducted still is the class is still going on for some time so any questions that you may have basic questions please do ask me any simple concepts which i can probably share live i can i'll definitely try to solve but not necessarily a problem per se okay right for example if you have a question on sir when can i use s infinite formula for a geometric progression definitely i'll give an example i may not solve it but i'll tell you in which context i can use okay okay right so as i told you abhay is asking when we can proceed with a geometric progression ka s infinite as i told you if you have a series which is 
return like this let's say 16 8 4 2 and if they are asking you three dots and if i ask you what is some to infinite times of this progression i think you know this progression is decreasing and it will never enter a negative territory because this is not an arithmetic progression a geometric progression will reduce in value but it will let, never become negative it will become zero because it started with the positive value and going on with positive values so in case of s infinite you know how to compute a by 1 minus r where a is the first term 16 r is nothing but every value is becoming half 1 by 2 16 minus 1 by 1 by 2 which is 16 into 2 by 1 which is equal to 32 so s infinite will become 32 right away so any such question which is very simple no? probably i can solve it right away so such questions you can definitely ask okay simple concepts okay hope it helped away right so so any other questions that you have guys please post in the group and i suggest please don't miss out on looking at those two videos of july 21 and the december 21 or november 21 attempt where we have recorded the video and shared with you so please do that i think it will give you a lot of perspective okay and we have one more question uh Kushi is asking sir can you add me in the group i think uh sai please note i think Kushi, it seems is not part of the group so you are referring to whatsapp group Kushi. so if that is the case then yeah so i think sai will probably look at sai sure. yeah 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 please add her in the group okay and any any time when you are solving problems since this is a last mile preparation anytime when you're solving any problem you face any difficulty please post it in the forum or anything specific that you want to check in case you face any issues technical issues in the application or any resources that you want to access you are not able to do so immediately i think our whatsapp group maybe up dal sakte wahabi up surat reply karenge and any any concept that you want to clear in the last moment where it's if you feel it's too late to solve ask with the forum i think you can reach out to side deep and you can speak with me and i like i will also clarify even if it is if it's not too late okay so i think we are there with you guys till your last minute for preparation i think we want all of you guys to do well i think this last minute of preparation is very very critical so i think whichever chapters you are fairly comfortable please do revise them i repeat again that any chapter theory question you should not leave problem i can still understand if you are not understanding the concept but statistics correlation regression numbers uh, what we call index numbers theoretical distributions all these chapters definitely have questions which are purely theory so i think we are all smart enough to remember questions and options so please remember the theory questions without fail irrespective of whether you like the chapter or not problems i can still agree if you don't want to solve one two problems because you're not comfortable or theory please don't miss out guys it's it's basically easy marks like easy pickings okay shivani is also saying please add me to so, sai please note shivani also shivani and kushi these are two students who have who wanted to be part of the group okay and uh, just wanted to clarify a bit uh, mm. so the whatsapp group was based on the percentage completion that mm. students had a couple of months back Okay. So I'll add the students, those who have requested now, and it's for the enrolled students only, the ones who have enrolled into the course. I'll add. Okay. Okay, fine. So I think that clarification is much much needed. Okay. So any other question, guys, uh, you want to post here, or you can also ask me, is there any specific formula that you want me to relook at once or explain in detail? Definitely I'm here. So you can just tell me the chapter and the formula. I'll probably look at it right now live and probably explain to you in detail anything that you feel still you have not able to understood understand okay yeah yes please tell me what is that you wanted to highlight yes harwani yes direct message yes there is a whatsapp group yes but as ib has mentioned it's only for students who have enrolled if you one of the students who have enrolled to our course definitely uh, he will add you okay okay so any anything specific that you want to check so please do ask so i think one of you asked should we proceed and remember formula 
about frequency distribution. That is the first chapter of your statistics where you have to remember the formula, how to compute mean, median, and mode when you have frequency distribution and tables. I suggest please don't lose your sleep over it. No need to remember those formulas. Basic formulas on mean, median, and mode, right? How to compute quartile deviation, how to compute mean deviation, what is standard deviation, what is variance, all those basic formulas, if you remember. I think 90% of the paper is in your hands. So please focus on the ones which you can easily remember, okay? So Om is saying, sir, please repeat the theoretical distribution again. So let me just go down for Om. Uh, let me go down. So regression, probability, theoretical distribution, yeah. So theoretical distribution, may basically we are focusing on three types of Ohm. One is the binomial distribution. Binomial, basically, it says that only two inputs. Poison, even more easy, you have only one input. And normal distribution, where we have a large formula. So what formula? So binomial distribution by nature has only two parameters. Don't think the parameters are P and Q, they are N and P. N will tell you the number of times the experiment is conducted. P will tell you what is the probability of success. So when you know what is the probability of success, probability of failure is 1 minus probability of success. So P and Q definitely are not the two parameters. Two parameters are the sample, where is the number of times the experiment is conducted and what is the probability of success. So with that, you can compute what is the value of P and you can compute what's the mean, what's the variance. And this is this, this also has come many number of times where he will tell you that when 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 the probability of success and probability of failure are equal, then what is the variance? The variance is basically, you know the formula is NPQ. When P and Q are both 1 by 2 and 1 by 2, N into 1 by 2 to 1 by 2 will become N by 4, right? So binomial distribution may, what is the formula for binomial distribution? How do you compute mean? How do you compute variance? When is the variance maximum of a binomial distribution? When probability of success and failure are equal, that is 50%. How to compute standard deviation and how to compute mode for a binomial distribution. Either it can have one modes or two modes, depending on the values. And Poisson distribution, where do we use Poisson distribution? Where the sample size is very large. For example, when I am conducting an experiment 10,000 times, obviously binomial distribution does not make sense. There, N is very large and probability of success is very small. For example, the number of defects, right? The number of defects when you are manufacturing, let us say, uh, when you are manufacturing, let us say, uh, uh, marbles in a factory, the number of defected marbles, maybe one in 500 or one in 1,000. There, obviously, your binomial distribution will not work. There will go to poison distribution where you know the formula for Poisson distribution, the only one parameter that you use in Poisson distribution is called M. How do you get M? When you multiply the number of what is the sample size into probability of success, it will you get M. And you just have to substitute the value of M in your formula. E power minus M into M power X by X factorial. X will basically tell you whether X is 0 or 1 or 2. That will be there in the question. So basically substitute the formula and get the Poisson distribution. And Poisson distribution, always mean and variance are equal. And what is the formula for variance? What is the formula for standard deviation? Here also you can have one mode or two modes depending on the inputs that are given. And the last one is basically a normal distribution. As I told you, normal distribution formula is very scary. That means 1 by sigma under root 2 pi into e power minus x minus mu whole square by 2, two sigma whole square is a very, 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 very complicated formula. But what are the most important is this one. This properties, if you remember now, you are assured of one mark. That means for which, which distrib theoretical distribution mean, median, mode are equal, you know it's a normal distribution, right? It's always unimodal. Whereas in Binomial distribution, poison distribution, you can see it can be unimodal, bimodal, whereas the normal distribution we discussed, it's always unimodal. What is the formula for variance? Okay. What is the formula for standard deviation? What are called inflection points? Okay. What is the basically the distribution, right? When you have values moving to u minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma, 99.3% 
area will be covered. Okay, how to compute first quartile, second quartile, third quartile? What is the formula for quartile deviation? When you compute standard deviation, 0.6577 times standard deviation will become quartile deviation. Mean deviation will be one standard deviation into 0.8. Okay, so these are the formulas that are very, very useful when you are doing normal distribution. Okay, and normal distribution is by far the most ideal distribution because mean, median, mode are all equal. So obviously it's the most symmetric and the most used distribution, right? So I hope this explanation was sufficient. Home, uh, what is that? Kushi is saying, okay, Kushi ka question hai. Uh, okay, so I'm saying, dear students, WhatsApp group was formed based on percentage completion of syllabus two months back. And it was for enrolled students. We are equally active and response in forums. Irrespective of whether you have enrolled or not, you can always reach there, no problem. So forums are also, in fact, when you post a question on forum, immediately I get an alert. So basically we'll try to revert at the earliest possible. So forums are more responsive if you ask me. Pushi is asking a question here. A dealer mixes rice costing 13.84 per kg with rice costing 15.4 per kg and sells the mixture and 17.6 per kg. So he earns a profit of 15. 14.6% on a selling price, the proportion in which he mixes two qualities of rice. Very beautiful question. I am facing difficulty in solving the above model question. Very good question and very timely question. Okay, so I think you should be prepared for solution. Let I am just checking where I can solve here. Take minute, kya karo? I will just open a Word document, okay? And I will try to solve it, okay? So just give me a clarification, Kushi. This 17.6 rupees, 17.6 jo kg hai na, is selling price or cost price? Hai? Is it selling price or a cost price? So just post it in the chat box, then I can proceed. I'll share the screen again. Okay. Let me go back to our basic. Uh, so I'll share the screen again. Share the screen. Share. Okay. Chalo. Abhi isme karunga main. So abhi question. Our question tha. Chat mein. Thik hai. In chat, what is the question of Kushika? A dealer mixes rice costing 13.84. Variety A is 13.84. Variety 2 is 15.54. And he mix kia and sells the mixture at 17.6 rupees per kg and earns a profit of 14.6% on his selling price. The proportion in which he mixes the two qualities of rice is. Now, let me tell you. ये 17.6 जो उसने दे रखा है क्वेश्चन में इज इट सेलिंग प्राइस और कॉस्ट प्राइस एंड जनरली जो प्रॉफिट बनता है ना बिजनेस में दैट इज ऑलवेज मेड ऑन द कॉस्ट प्राइस तो थोड़ा अजीब सा लग रहा है व्हेन यू आर सेइंग ही अर्न्स ए प्रॉफिट ऑफ 14.6% ऑन ए सेलिंग प्राइस जस्ट गिव मी द क्लेरिफिकेशन एंड देन आई कैन हेल्प यू 17.64 इज सेलिंग प्राइस अच्छा 17.64 बोल रहा है ओके okay. And is this right when you say he earns a profit of 14.6% on his selling price? Is that right? Or does he just mention he earns a profit of 14.6? I think selling price for a misleading here. Okay. Already selling price de raka hai. Or here we bol rahe 14.6% on his selling price. Theek hai. Okay, so I'm kya karenge if if the question is right. Okay, I'm thinking that question is right. So abhi dekh lo. 17.6 jo diya na humko. 17.6 jo value hai. Where is it? Ah, sorry. 17.6 jo value hai. They are saying this is selling price here. Okay. And usne jo profit banaya a 14.6 percent which is roughly. Uh, let me read. Okay, fine. So it is. One seventh. Abhi ab pakar lo. One by seven is fourteen point two eight percent. Okay. One by two fifty percent. One by four twenty five percent. 
लाइक वन सेवेंथ ऑफ एनी वैल्यू इज फोर्टीन पॉइंट टू एट परसेंट अभी क्या करेंगे हम वन बाई सेवन ऑफ सेवनटीन पॉइंट सिक्स करेंगे एक बार लेट्स सेवन टू जार फोर्टीन एंड टू पॉइंट फाइव लेट्स टू पॉइंट फाइव टू सेवनटीन पॉइंट सिक्स फोर उसने दिया तो टू पॉइंट फाइव टू इज योर प्रॉफिट गाइस ओके तो वन सेवेंथ फोर्टीन पॉइंट परसेंट मैंने निकाला टू पॉइंट फाइव टू आ रहा है तो बेसिकली फोर्टीन पॉइंट क्या प्रॉफिट था वो प्रॉफिट परसेंटेज कितना था फोर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट अच्छा फोर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट तो ये राउंड ऑफ कर लेते हैं ये सेवनटीन पॉइंट सिक्स है मेरा है टू पॉइंट सिक्स है लेट से ये फोर्टीन उसमें से टू पॉइंट सिक्स पकड़ लो सेवनटीन पॉइंट सिक्स से टू पॉइंट सिक्स सब्ट्रैक्ट करो आपको आएगा फिफ्टीन अभी वाई एम ए ट्राइंग टू डू दिस इज बिकॉज वेन यू आर परचेजिंग टू आइटम्स एट डिफरेंट प्राइस एंड यू आर मिक्सिंग दैम यू विल गेट ए मिक्सचर हुज प्राइस विल बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द वन दट यू आर मिक्स राइट एंड वॉट इज द Value. What is the price of inputs? Thirteen point eight four and fifteen point five four. So basically, you have a formula, guys, which is n one x one plus n two x two divided by n one plus n two. Basically, this is called weighted average. So, abhi weighted average ka kitna hai? Mujhe fifteen hai. I am presuming that the question is right. Fifteen. So, abhi usne bola kushi ne. Uh, डीलर मिक्सेस राइस कॉस्टिंग थर्टीन पॉइंट एट फोर पर के जी विथ राइस कॉस्टिंग फिफ्टीन पॉइंट फाइव फोर पर के जी तो कितना के जी उसने यूज किया वो बताया नहीं हमको तो एन वन वैसी रखो एंड एक्स वन वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स वन दिस फॉर्मुला में कुछ वॉट यू डू इज एल एच एस आप मैंने बोला आपको फिफ्टीन कैसा आया एन वन इज टू एन टू इज वॉट यू फाइंड आउट सो इन प्लेस ऑफ एक्स वन यू पुट फिफ्टीन थर्टीन पॉइंट एट फोर इन प्लेस ऑफ एक्स वन In place of x two, you put fifteen point five four, and let the LHS be fifteen. N one and N two are anyway unknowns. After putting the values, just cross multiply. Take N one one side, take N two one side, and find out the ratio of N one is to N two. You will get some value. Okay. The only challenge here is the values are very very cumbersome. That means they are given for two decimals. So obviously that is creating the trouble. But this is the formula that you are going to use, and the so, If any of you are having doubts, sir, why are you doing a selling price? Why don't you directly take it LHS directly? Why why did you calculate the percentage and then subtracted and used this for fifteen? Because when you are mixing two values which are basically cost price, the weighted average that you get also will be cost price. So deliberately gave you selling price to mislead you. So just because selling price is given, I'm LHS me won't I add it? हम सेलिंग प्राइस है हमारे पास प्रॉफिट परसेंटेज है तो हम कॉस्ट प्राइस कंप्यूट करेंगे बिकॉज अब जो मिक्सचर आप बनाएंगे ना उसमें कॉस्ट प्राइस ही डालना है सेलिंग प्राइस नहीं डालना है तो सेलिंग प्राइस कॉस्ट प्राइस के ऊपर प्रॉफिट जोड़ के आप सेलिंग प्राइस डिसाइड करते ओके सो इफ आई एम मिक्सिंग टू वैल्यूज बेसिकली वॉट आई एम गोइंग टू गेट फर्स्ट इज कॉस्ट प्राइस देन आई विल लोड माई प्रॉफिट ऑन टू इट और एड प्रॉफिट ऑन टू इट देन आई डिसाइड वॉट इज सेलिंग प्राइस ओके So please do that, Kushi. I think then you will get the answer, and then you can also verify it with your scanner. The solution. I hope it matches. But generally, a two decimal ka question, thoda, aajkal they are avoiding it because unnecessarily it will create a lot of trouble in terms of computation. It's ideal if they give thirteen rupees per kg and seventeen rupees per kg and sixteen rupees per kg. As a dear, so it's easier because at the end of the day, what they want, whether you know the concept or not. वन डेसिमल स्टिल ओके बट टू डेसिमल थोड़ा मुश्किल है बट एज लॉन्ग एज यू नो द प्रॉब्लम प्लीज गो फॉर इट एंड सी विच ऑप्शन इज द क्लोजेस्ट टू वॉट यू गॉट इफ यू गॉट एन ऑप्शन विच इज नॉट देयर सी द क्लोजेस्ट ऑप्शन इफ इट इज मैचिंग गो फॉर इट ओके फाइन सो आई थिंक दिस क्वेश्चन इज आंसर्ड पार्शियली तो बाकी जो सिंप्लीफिकेशन करना है आप करो एंड आई थिंक यू शुड बी इन अ पोजिशन टू गेट द आंसर वेरी कंफर्टेबली ओके otherwise if you are still not getting the answer if you get a completely wrong answer please click a picture and post it in our forum we will attend to that question i will also solve it again and then i'll post a picture in the forum if your answer is completely away from any of the options okay so i think we are getting closer to the end of the session guys anyone still having any further doubts please post it here right now or you can always use the whatsapp group if you are part of it or please use the forum to ask any relevant questions and i think we will support you till the last minute any question that you ask will be answered okay so 
I think that's it from my end. Sai, you want to add anything else? No, I think all good. All good. Guys, I think please, I am repeating again. Don't leave any theory question unanswered. I would want all of you guys to open your ICA material. Every chapter, please look at the first exercise. Remember all the answers for theory questions, especially statistics. Definitely there will be theory questions. So definitely all the theory questions has to be answered. These are the easy pickings. So easy pickings or low hanging fruits as they call in English. So low hanging fruits pere apko plug karna padega. Immediately apko question paper dekhte apko theory questions jo bhi hai wo answer karlo fata fat. Then easy questions chun lo. Go with that approach. Don't try to answer the questions in the order it is given because you can choose any question any point of time. So please go through the paper as per your convenience. Linearly, one question number one, question number two, as a much job, maths me. Whichever question appeals to you, please go for it. But ensure that you don't too much of zigzag. Too much of zigzag also will waste time. So please ensure that you cover all the questions. Any question you feel is taking a lot of time, will take a lot of time, please just underline it and revisit it subsequently because every question carries the same amount of marks. So there's no point running behind a question which is going to take five minutes of your time. Okay. So please invest time wisely in picking the questions and ignoring the tough questions and doing the easy questions. Okay. With that, I'll end the I'll end the session for the day. Thank you for logging in a little late in the day also. So I think hopefully this session was useful for students who have joined. So any further queries, you are welcome to post it in the group or in the forum. So we'll definitely come back to you. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, thank you for your time. I think all of you stay safe. Don't venture outside and uh, till your exam, please stay safe. Uh, don't have any health issues. If you feel you're having any cold or fever, please take medicines immediately and take precautions till your exam, guys, okay? So I think you have to stay safe and hope all of you come on with flying colors, okay? Thank you. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you, Pavan. Thanks a lot.